Good day viewers, my name is Darlene Tinokoka and I welcome you to Dell with Electrical YouTube channel. For the past four weeks we've been talking on the understanding the vector group of a transformer and today we the first week we talked about the nomenclatures used by the IEC to talk about the vector groups. Second week we talked about the star de the delta connection. The third week we saw how the vector groups of a transformer is being drawn how you can draw the vector group by yourself but today we are going to be talking about the transformer vector group test now when you look at the nameplates of your transformer you would see that the vector group the vector group nomenclature is given so it's ideal you test to confirm that the vector group given on the nameplate is the same way the windings of the transformer have been wound before by the manufacturer before bringing it to the market because if what is on the nameplate is not equal to what is on the winding of the transformer obviously you're going to run into a big problem when you want to connect that transformer in parallel with other transformer on a single bus bar so please i would advise that before you purchase a transformer especially when you want to parallel the transformer it is ideal that you carry out a vector group test for that transformer to ensure that the vector group on the nameplate is identical to the same on the wideness of the transformer now i will show you this um, on my screen i will show you the name plate of this transformer now look at this you see the vector group the vector group of this transformer is ynd11 so you are going to test to confirm if actually the vector group of this transformer is really ynd11 because all transformers that are supposed to be connected on the bus bar that this transformer should be connected should have ynd11 now to carry out this test is very easy it's not a complex test it's not a test that you want to you, you you want to stress yourself automatically the only difficulty there is that you need a three-phase generator or a three-phase supply so how this is done ensure first of all you have to ensure that there is no connection on both the low voltage and the high voltage side you don't have any connection on the low voltage and the high voltage side if you have any you have to disconnect it before you carry out any connection across so the terminals must not be connected with anything now the grounding ensure that the grounding is not looped to other connections you can ground the transformer if you wish but ensure that the grounding is not bonded to other connections within the facility so if the transformer is a new transformer no need to bond when you put it on the ground it's already having a earth connection but if you have already connected and a grounding to it then you don't need to lose it if you don't want but ensure that that grounding is only meant for that particular transformer then if you want to also then the next step is if you look at the transformer transformer has capital r capital y and capital b and we have small r small y small b so the mechanisms use a capital a capital b capital c and small a small b small c why some other transformer uses capital U, capital V, capital W, and small u, small v, sub w. Irrespective of the nomenclature that was used on your transformer, just know that what you want to do is to take an identical phase of the high voltage side with the identical phase of the low voltage side and short circuit them together. So what am I saying? If you want to do the red phase, you carry you you short circuit the red phase of the high voltage side and short circuit the to the red phase of the low voltage side when you have short circuit look at it on this diagram carefully you see that this is u the red phase i short circuited it and took the other short circuit to u of the low voltage bushing so when you short circuit these two bushings together automatically you have shunted this circuit together I hope this is understood then when you've done that then you have to connect a generator most people use a single phase generator to carry out this test but you cannot have a balanced voltage your circuit will not be balanced because what the generator is giving you here is not what is so you are going to use a generator a balanced three phase generator a generator that the output is giving you three phase that is what you need so let's look at this diagram very well you could see that on this diagram we have a generator this is a three-phase generator it's giving out red yellow blue and there's a neutral terminal outside but we're not using the neutral so what you do the red phase is connected to the red phase of the transformer 
the yellow phase output for the generator is connected to the yellow output of the transformer then the blue phase is connected to the blue phase of the transformer note this connection is going to the high voltage terminal of the transformer is going is i didn't connect anything to the low voltage terminal why am i connected to the high voltage so that the voltage is being stepped down by the transformer to a low voltage if you connect anything to this low voltage side it will step up the voltage and what you are going to be getting here will be dangerous and the operator might be killed so it's better you put everything on the high voltage side like if this transformer now is 11 400 volts now you are putting the high voltage on the 11 side so what you are going to get here will be very minimal but when you are putting it on the low voltage side you'll be expecting an 11,000 volt be out, out as output here which might be very dangerous so please take note when you are carrying out this test your your power supply from the generator is going to the high voltage terminals of the transformer just the way it has been connected now when it has been connected you are going to prepare a data sheet a data sheet that you are using you are going to use to take your voltage measurement then take note that it is the red phase that we have connected this is the red phase which is your u high voltage and r small r low voltage so this is our data sheet you can take a screenshot of this data sheet and use it to suit your own kind of measurement you are going to be carrying so when you've done that you 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 need a voltmeter voltmeter is used to measure the voltage low voltage so you are going to use a low voltmeter or a multimeter when you have a multimeter you can tune the knob to the voltage the ac voltage position and you can use it to measure the voltage so when you look at this table you have how, how this is the applied voltage this is your applied voltage so your applied voltage is measured your phase voltage is also measured now if you look at your generator your arrow, arrow you, you measure this these two this is your arrow this is your y and this is your b this is the nomenclature there is uvw that's what is obtainable in transformer so you measure your your applied voltage arrow, arrow. That's the voltage from the transformer from the generator you measure it r r y r y b b y b r r b all these are the applied voltages from the transformer you can measure it from the generator side you can measure it from the transformer side so this is r y you take your multimeter and measure r y you go to your your second one is y r go to your generator this is r y b measure y r y r so just take note that this is your uvw is the same thing as r y b so all the inputs the same thing r y these are just three phase measurements you are measuring then on the phase voltage take note that capital r and small r has been shunted so if you measure these two it should give you zero if it doesn't give you zero that means there's a problem somewhere so when you take your multimeter and measure the voltage here and here it should give you zero because you shunted them together so you are going to measure r r then measure r y r y means take the terminal for the multimeter measure r and put your y here take your terminals measure r put your b here so this is your r y b a so this is what you are going to measure then the same thing too take your y measure your y r measure your y y using your multimeter and you record everything the same thing with your B2, measure your B. So when you have taken all your measurements, you will notice why you should take all the measurements. You are not supposed to take all the measurements if you are testing alone. Uh, you will see what are the items you need. But when you are testing and you feel that after testing, it's not what is on the nameplate. You have to tell the, your, your client what the um, vector group is. You, you can't also say this does not meet the vector group but you must say that this does not meet the vector group that from what you have measured the vector group of this transformer is so so and so and we'll take note of that so now testing for dyn11 that is to show you that your high voltage is delta connected your low voltage is star connected and the neutral is brought out and they are 30 degrees apart 11 means 11 o'clock which means that it's 30 degrees apart so after carrying this test and you have had all, all this table measured so you have to find out if actually is what it was so look at it this is dyn11 this is your high voltage is delta connected 
your low voltage is star connected and the neutral is brought out this is your diagram automatically then your generator source your red yellow and blue look at it your red is connected to the red face your yellow is connected to the yellow face and your blue is connected to the blue face now look at it the red of the delta of the high voltage is connected is, shun is shunted together to the red of the low voltage this is the shunt that has been shunted together now the high voltage is delta connected the low voltage is star connected that's gyn11 so if you su superimpose this to this i told you that the high voltage side is the reference point this is the reference point so you are going to bring this low voltage side into this delta connected part now look at it this is our this is our delta row y b this is our star the low voltage side so you have to take the axis this is the axis of the red this is the axis of the y this is the axis of the b then you bring in your star connection this is your r this is your y this is your b and this is your neutral then we said it's 11 o'clock dyn 11 dyn 11 so this is our 11 o'clock and this is it tilted at 30 degree apart so obviously this is your star connection now must tilt 30 degree away from here so we're going to put it on this our hour should be on our 11 o'clock so now this is where 11 o'clock is so we're going to shift it you see we have shifted it now to 11 o'clock can you get it now you shifted to 11 o'clock so this is our star connection this is our plane and it's 30 degrees away on 11 o'clock i hope this is getting this because we are dealing with dyn 11. then the next one is you notice that we connected our r our r is connected to our r we loop them together our r is shunted to r so that means we are going to take this r and bring it down to this capital r look at this our r now we have brought it down we have looped it together so we are going to bring up bring up this entire star connection and put it on this axis to be r connected to r so when we carry it on this r connected to r this is what we get so by the time we get this we want to still connect the axis together so your your r this is this is your y now your y is connected to your y your y is connected to your b you just want to get this axis together so by the time you have measured this is what is going to stand as our rules to ensure that we have our dyn connection so if you look at this carefully if you look at this carefully you will see that our r capital r y our capital ROI is equal to RN plus YN. Our capital ROI, that's from here to here, should be equal to RN and YN. Is that okay? Then the next one is our YB. If you look at it now, our YB should be approximately equal to YY. Our YB should be approximately equal to y y then our bb our bb should be our bb should be less than by our bb should be look at it from the line now you see how this bb is less than by so these are the conditions that must be fulfilled to ensure that this vector connection is dyn 11. so if you measure this if you measure this one this one to this one and it doesn't give you this one you know that this is not a dyn you have already you already have all these values on that table you've measured your red face and neutral you've measured your yellow face and neutral you've measured your r and y you've measured your y and b so all these values are already on that already on this table that we you've already measured it on this table so you have to take cognizance of this table so it's through this table now you used to go and check these conditions so once these conditions are fulfilled you would know that you have carried out that, that what you have done is dyn 11. so if you are only testing if you're only testing for dyn 11 and you don't want to give any recommendation to in case if it fails the only things you have to measure is ry rn yn yb yy bb and by from that table so you don't need to measure everything on that table if you're only going to test for dyn 11. 
But if you want to test for DYN11 and when the test fails, then you have to do every other test on that table. So the same thing happens for YND11. YND11 means that your high voltage is star and the neutral is brought out, then the low voltage is delta and they are 30 degrees apart, which is 11. So if you look at this now, this is Y star connection with your delta brought out. And this is your, your low voltage is, is um, with your neutral brought out, sorry. And this is your um, low voltage that is delta connected. So I told you that your arrow should be looped together. This is your arrow for your high voltage. This is your arrow for the low voltage and they are shunt shunted together. Then you have to take a three phase and neutral connection to most times you don't need this neutral. You can only take the three phase, but it's advisable that you put the neutral. So your, your red face is connected to the red, your yellow face is connected to the yellow, your blue face is connected to the blue, and your neutral connection is connected to the neutral from your generator. So this one is from your generator. Now when you have connected it, you have to analyze. So let's analyze. This is our star connection and this is our delta connection. So you have to, you, I told you your high voltage is your source. You have to superimpose your high voltage to your, your low voltage onto your high voltage. Now look at it. This is our star connection. Our star connection, our arrow, our Y, our N. This is our delta connection. So you bring in our delta connection, our delta connection is connected like this. Now we said they are 11 o'clock. Our 11, 11 o'clock, it means that they are 30 degrees apart. So how do you get your 30 degrees? You see that this is, this is your value and your 30 degrees automatically you have a 30 degrees apart here if you see it your 30 degrees this this is your you have to make do with what 30 degree is so if you sh check it now it's 30 degrees apart so what does what what it means that your 11 o'clock you are shifting you see that your arrow now your arrow if you want to get 30 degrees across here you have to shift your b to come here so your B will be on this position. So exactly, you see that your B now is on the position of your arrow. Initially, your B is outside, but this is 30 degrees. So you have to shift it backward to get this location. So that is how we've gotten your delta to be superimposed on your star. Now, if you look at it now, your arrow, your capital R and your small R were connected together. Your capital R and small R, they were shunted together. So you have to shunt it. So when you shunt it, you will come to this position. So we've got to our R, R that is connected, and we've got to your Y, and we've got to your B still shunted together. So this is your vector diagram. So you see on your vector diagram, we are going to set conditions for your Y N D eleven. So your condition is that if you look at your R N, this is your R N from here to here is R N. Your R N should be equal to R B and N B. RB plus MB. So you see that your RN should be equal to RB, RB plus MB. That's this straight line. So if this condition must be fulfilled. The next one is your YB. Your YB should be approximately equal to YY. Your YB should be approximately equal to YY. Your YB should be approximately equal to YY. Then the last one should be your BB. Your BB should be less than br your bb should be less than br so this is the test to fulfill a yND11 connection that means if you are testing for only yND11 the only test you need on that table is rn rb bn yb yy bb and br except you want to test and give recommendation that is when you have to do the entire table. So I'm sure that you can do the other test by yourself. And if you have any problem or challenges, you can make, uh, you can ask me on your comment section and I would definitely answer you. So please, if this video is continuously being useful to you, kindly click the subscription button so that you would subscribe to our channel and get notified when subsequent videos are being posted. So I would like to conclude by telling you that if you are doing your YND11, all these are work for YND11. This is the condition for YND1, YND5, YND7, YND11, DYN1, 
dyn5 dyn7 so these are the various conditions so if it's only one of the vector group you are testing all these are what you need to measure but if you are testing and giving recommendation you have to measure everything on the table so i thank you very much for having this patience to have been in this class for the past four weeks and if this this is just to show you the vector group of a transformer the in-depth analysis of the vector group of a transformer and i believe that i've been able to break it down extensively to you that even when you are sleeping you should be able to understand what vector group this transformer is and how to draw the vector diagram efficiently so if this video has been very useful to you please kindly click the subscription button to subscribe to our youtube channel and click on the notification icon so as to get notified when subsequent educative videos are being posted to our channel thank you very much for coming to our channel and see you in our subsequent video mm -hmm.